Hey guys, I'm a bit late in making this video, so many of you may already have the free 2.3 update, but I wanted to put together a quick overview. In the previous release, version 2.2, I made it so the app could automatically read common folder names of sample packs, so you no longer had to do the work of manually sorting samples into folders, and can instead just drop in your sample packs and let KitMaker do the work. Now, in version 2.3, KitMaker can also read file names. That means if your sample pack isn't organized into folders, and is just loose samples, KitMaker can now read the file names themselves and make kits from the sample pack. I've also added multiple banks for MPC and Ableton Live. This was a highly requested feature and is now part of KitMaker. Simply go to your preferences and save how many banks you want to use in your kit presets. Each kit preset file will now contain multiple banks of kits. There is a new feature for processing pre-grouped kits. This is for sample packs that, instead of doing the normal categorized folders of kicks, snares, hats, and so on, the pack has each kit already grouped together in a kit folder that contains the sounds for that kit. To process these, select the Process Pre-grouped Kits item from the menu, and choose the pack folder that contains those pre-grouped kits. When processed, each preset will be correctly named after its drum kit folder. Note that in this current version, KitMaker walks you through an extra step that uses the machine processing mode. In a future update, this extra step won't be required. It's also easy to process Splice Beatmaker presets into kits. If you have them downloaded to your computer, KitMaker can find the default directory and process the kits. There is more info on this in the KitMaker manual. I wanted to take a second and mention my other app, PresetMaker. It's similar to KitMaker, but focuses on multi-sample instruments and melodic one-shot samples. If you have sample packs that include multi-samples, drag and drop them into PresetMaker and have multi-sample instruments created with all the notes automatically mapped for you. It makes these instrument presets for DAWs such as MPC, Ableton Live, Beatmaker, and Deluge, as well as SFZ files. It also works well with sample packs that have a lot of one-shot melodic samples. It can take your one-shot samples and automatically organize and group them into useful presets of different categories such as guitars, keys, synths, strings, and so on. If interested, check out the full video on Preset Maker in the description. And back to the kit maker updates. There's lots of little fixes. Deluge kits work better thanks to user feedback, and the Ableton Live preferences are much easier to use. New keywords have been added to better sort a larger variety of sample packs. If you update from an older version of KitMaker, you can reset your keywords to have the new keywords added. A really useful and overlooked feature of KitMaker is the numbered files format. This creates kits in the form of folders that contain numbered samples. The reason for this format is that there are several DAWs that use encryption and KitMaker can't recreate certain presets. But a lot of these DAWs allow you to drag and drop multiple samples at a time and will sequentially fill the pads. This means you can use the numbered files format to essentially make kits for many more DAWs that we can't directly make presets for. For example, converting your sample packs to use inside machine. Create your kits using the numbered files format. Now, loading a kit is as simple as dragging and dropping the contents onto the empty machine kit. It will even keep your pad layout due to the numbered file names. You can also swap kits by dragging the files of a different kit and overriding the pads with new samples. Because the pad order is consistent, your MIDI drum patterns will still work with all the different kits. You can use numbered files format with many DAWs, such as Machine, Bitwig, Logic, Reason, Cubase, Geist 2, Circuit Rhythm and Tracks, and more. Although these are not direct presets, dragging and dropping kits into your DAW is very quick, and many of these DAWs allow you to save the kits as presets for later. You can also use numbered files with Koala or the SP404 MK2, where you can easily drag and drop a full kit into your project. Check out the Numbered Files webpage on our site for more information. Or take a look at Jeff Gibbons' videos where he uses Numbered Files to add machine kits to various DAWs. Okay, there's just a few more updates to mention. If you are new to the app or ever need a refresh on how the app works, there's now a quick guide built in that you can access at any time from the main window. This goes over the basics and is useful as a quick refresher. Next to that, there's a Help button. This is a new window that gives you quick access to the online manual and other info. The help pages on the website have been updated, and there are several new pages such as info on deep customization of kits, which drum packs work best, help with sample pack mode or machine mode, and more. 
If you ever have a problem using the app, or if an issue comes up in the future, make sure to check the technical help page on the website. I always update the help section with information and fixes as needed, but not everyone knows to check there. It's also now easy to see which version you are on by looking at the top right of the main window, and you can quickly check for updates using the drop-down menu. The license system has been updated and fixes some rare issues that affected some users. If you want to try all the latest KitMaker features in the future, sign up for the beta mailing list at kit-maker.com beta and be updated when a new beta version of the app is ready to try. If a beta is available, make sure to still sign up for the list so you get updates on it. The next beta will add Ableton Move as a format, which should be available to try soon or potentially right now, depending on when you see this video. I will keep that updated in the description. The following update after that will have a lot of new updates in several areas, so even if you don't have the Ableton Move, there will still be cool new stuff for you to try in the future. I don't have exact timelines for anything, but I try to add these free updates when I can. And feel free to comment if you have more feature suggestions below. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the update.